Hey guys, welcome back to another CSS tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to be explaining how to use tab index. Uh, so, what tab index allows you to do is it basically allows you to change the order in which a user is going to be able to access your inputs um, through the tab. So, as an example, let's just go here. Uh, let's just create a new thing. Oh, oh yes, yeah, sorry. So let's say we had a bunch of inputs. Let's just create some input type text. We'll give them a value. Let's just say one, two, like this. And I'll just make them different. Okay, so usually when users are on a page and they click tab, they're gonna end up on this one, then this one, then this one, then this one. You know, that's how tabbing works. It works like in order because it, that's just the way which makes the most sense. So you might want to change that though, and it's actually very easy to do that. So instead of making it uh, like this, let's say we want it to go from 1 to 3 to 2 to 4. So what we can do is we can leave this tab index as 0, just like that. But now we can change this tab index to 1, this to 2, and this can be 3. So now what we're going to do is if I click tab, um, oh, sorry, I forgot that CSS doesn't use zeros like that. Okay, so let's try this again. So we click tab, starts on one, now it's gonna go straight to three, now it goes to two, and then it goes to four. So you can see we could change the tab index and we can change the order in which we approach the tabs, uh, approach the inputs like that. So while they're in order like this, it doesn't really make sense to do this, but you might have a situation where you have some complex layout um, and you wanna say, so, for example, uh, let's just make this float to the side. I think if I do this, and let's say we put this over here or something. Actually, probably shouldn't have made the last one float. So let's just say we want the third one to float to the right. Okay, so if we leave this tab index as normal now, what's going to happen here is it's going to go one, two, three, four, like that. Even though this one is third uh, and it's floating on the left, like if you see on the page, it seems like it should go from this one, this one, this one, and this one. But that's just not how it works. So you can change that manually. So you want one, two, four, three, like this. And that's going to fix it for you. One, two, three, and then four, like that. OK, so that was the basic tab index. Now there's actually a few more things you could do with tab index and I'm just going to show you one of them here. So well, uh, one other thing you can do is you can actually give it a tab index of negative one. And basically what that's going to allow you to do is it's just going to stop you from being able to go onto that input by tabbing. So let's start this again. I've given the uh, second text input tab index negative one. So if I start, it's going to go to number one and I'll notice what happens now. It's going to skip straight to number uh, the third one, but actually the fourth one because of our tab index rules. Uh, let's just make this simple again. Okay, yeah, so notice how it goes from one straight to three, then to four. So we just completely skip two, and we can do this for multiple tab indexes like this. Now we're going to go straight from one straight to four like that, just skips both of these. And yeah, this is useful if you have some kind of a button or something which you know if you have a long row of inputs and then let's just try and simulate something so we have a button which says click me and let's just do something like this so we have two rows right and we want to quickly fill out all of this input so oh, probably shouldn't have done Yeah, okay, so we want to fill out all these inputs. So let's go with this one, fix that, like that. And yeah, you can just see how that's not how we want it. And oh my god, sorry. Let's just get rid of all of this. Okay, so we start on one, we just go through all of this, and you can see that it's just it could go onto this which is not what we want so we can give this a tab index of negative one 
So yeah, thanks for watching, and that's basically all I have to say. Let's just write our notes up here. So we can do tab index, which controls the order of the elements selected by the tab key, and then setting tab index to negative one stops the element from being able to be selected. So those are the basic notes from today's video. Thanks for watching and uh, now you know how to use tab index. See you guys in a future tutorial. Bye.